In this video, we'll talk about confidence intervals. Uh, then we'll do, do a few examples, and then we'll interpret them. So this video will always assume we're in the frequentist setting, meaning our unknown parameter theta will be some fixed unknown quantity and not a random variable. So this could be maximum likelihood or method of moments. Um, so when doing point estimation, actually the probability our answer is exactly correct is zero, right? Like the probability that your estimator is equal to the true parameter is zero, and that's because theta is a real number and can take uncountably many values, right? So imagine you're estimating the probability of heads on a coin. You're not going to get exactly correct. You might be very close, but not perfectly correct. So instead, we can give an interval. Instead of just our maximum likelihood estimate, we just give an interval around it um, such that theta falls into it with high probability. It's just like how continuous random variables will never equal exactly any particular value. So we can uh, create an interval, okay? So we want the probability that theta lies in this uh, interval, theta hat plus or minus delta. So we need, I mean, theta hat's our estimate, and we need to find like how much to go in each direction. And we want this probability to be something like 95% or 99%. And that's something you can choose. So here's a picture. Uh, here's theta hat. Here's theta on the real number line. Uh, we don't know theta, but we can construct some interval theta hat plus delta, theta hat minus delta, which is this big interval. And we want theta to hopefully fall into it. Okay, so we might write something like the probability theta lies in this interval theta minus theta hat minus delta plus delta. Um, there's many ways to write it, and they all mean the same thing. It just means that the distance from theta hat to theta is at most delta. And so notice that we can write this in two different ways. One where theta is in this interval, or one is where theta hat is in this interval. And these, again, just mean that um, our estimate differs from the true value by at most delta. So remember the standard normal CBF. Um, suppose theta hat is normal, and this might be true, right, if um, theta has the sample mean, which we've seen a lot, uh, and by the central limit theorem. So it actually is pretty likely that our theta hat is normally distributed. So we're going to talk about this. Um, just remember that phi of a value is just the probability it's the standard normal is less than that value, right? Um, but you can review this yourself. So let's say theta hat's normally distributed, right? And we want 95% uh, a confidence interval. So that means we want to, this is the normal density function. We want to uh, contain 95% of the area out of the 100%, right? So that means 2.5% of the area must be on each side if we want it to be symmetric, which we usually do. And so the left bound actually happens to be negative 1.96. That means we go 1.96 standard deviations below the mean, and we'll have 2.5% area to the left. For the right-hand side, okay, we have 2.5 to the right, which means that 97.5% area is to the left of 1.96. And so um, if you want a 95% interval, right, you draw this picture and say, okay, uh, there's 97.5% area to the left of this point. And to get that point, 1.96, you just look up the inverse phi table, right? Uh, phi inverse of 0.975, you do like a reverse lookup. And, and find 1.96. And so your interval will be plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations from the mean, which is your uh, theta hat. Okay, so now let's do an example. Suppose we have n samples from Poisson theta. Then our maximum likelihood and method moments estimators were both the sample mean, okay? And so we want to create an interval around theta hat, which contains theta with probability 95%. So recall that Okay, so our, uh, the mean and variance of a Poisson are actually just both theta, if you look that up. So that means the expected value of our sample mean, our estimate, is just theta, and our variance is sigma squared over n, which is theta over n. And so by the central limit theorem, theta hat is normally distributed, approximately, with mean theta, variance theta over n. And so uh, we can standardize to get normal 0, 1. And so let's uh, start from what we had earlier, like you know, probability that theta hat falls between theta hat, uh, theta plus delta, theta minus delta. That's one of the three equivalent formulations. Um, and let's just rearrange, subtract theta from all sides, divide, and so we're just standardizing all the sides, right? And, and then the center just becomes z, right? We said normal 0, 1. And we want this to be 0.95. And so we know that uh, phi inverse of 0.975 is 1.96. So that means this should be 1.96 and this should be 1.96. So we just solve for delta 
once we set this to 1.96 and you get that uh, delta is 1.96 square root of theta over n and this should make sense because we need uh, we didn't have a standard normal right theta hat's not standard normal but we know we should go 1.96 standard deviations in each direction and what's the standard deviation of theta hat it's just the square root of the variance the square root of theta over n is just the square root of theta over n and so we just go 1.96 standard deviations in each direction uh, to get this 95% area under this normal distribution, which theta hat has. So um, remember that theta hat, to summarize, theta hat is a point estimate, which is always wrong. Um, a 100, 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval is usually centered at theta hat, such that it contains um, the true parameter with probability 1 minus alpha. So, um, and if theta hat is a sample mean, and this is so important, like sometimes this you can't use this formula below because uh, for like exponential or geometric when it's like the inverse sample mean, then you can't use this formula. So but if theta hat is the sample mean, then it's approximately normal. And so you can just go from theta hat plus or minus that many standard deviations, uh, where z1 minus alpha over two is the inverse of 0.975, for example. So again, this formula only works for uh, when theta hat is the sample mean. So it's normal. And so let's do one more example. We want to construct a 99% interval for theta for Bernoulli theta. When we have 400 samples and observed 136 successes or heads, right, out of 400 flips. And our estimator was uh, MLE and method moments were both the sample mean. And so uh, 136 over 400 is 0.34. So that's our point estimate, right? That's our single number estimate. And so if I want to create a confidence interval, 99%, okay, I need to look at 99.5 because if there's 0.5% uh, on the left and the right side, then I need to look up the inverse of 0.995 instead of just 0.99, right? And so we're just going to go that many standard deviations over sigma over root n. So z.995, if you look up the inverse phi table, uh, just go to the phi table, find 0.995 in the middle, and go back outwards to see what are the values that... Um, got to 0.995, you get 2.576. And sigma is unknown, unfortunately. The sigma is just the standard deviation of a single sample. But thankfully, we know that the variance of a Bernoulli theta, right, one of the samples, is just theta 1 minus theta. So the standard deviation is just the square root of that. Um, but we don't know theta, so we're going to plug in our estimator theta hat for theta, right, because we don't know what theta is. And so our approximate Standard deviation is 0.474. And so our confidence interval, you just plug in the formula. You just go 0.34 plus, or, remember that was our maximum likelihood estimate, plus or minus 2.576 standard deviations away. And the standard deviation of the sample mean is just the standard deviation of a sample divided by the square root of the number of samples, right? And so you get this confidence interval. So how do we interpret a 99% confidence interval like, like the one we just constructed? So uh, you might think that it's like the probability that 99% uh, probability that theta falls into this interval theta hat minus delta, theta hat plus delta. And so this is actually wrong because theta is some number, right, that you don't know. It could be like 0.4, for example. And we already constructed our confidence interval to be 0 0.279, 0 0.401. So there's no probability involved here. It's, it's either in the interval or it's not. So uh, the correct way... Uh, is to say if we constructed uh, we repeated this process several times so we get n samples each time and constructing different confidence intervals so remember like if i flip it 400 times and another 400 times another 400 and each time i construct a confidence interval they're going to be different right because i'm not going to always get 136 heads then the interpretation is that 99 percent of these intervals i create will construct uh, will contain theta and alternatively before you receive the samples, you can say there's a 99% probability that theta will fall into our to be constructed confidence interval. So if you didn't plug in like hard numbers yet, then you can say that this probability um, uh, that theta is in this interval is 99%. But once you plug in the numbers and get the samples, you cannot uh, say that. So that's a very subtle difference there. Thanks.